when you went truck racing, did you consider that a step down or was it time for you to step back and spend time with your family and, and let Jasper do what they want, you know, let Jasper see what they could do? Yeah. No. You know, I wanted to race a couple more years, but it was the time racing was changing. Earnhardt had been gone for five years. The sport's kind of changing. Younger people are coming in. They're bringing money in. It ain't like the owners are calling you now. It's like, how much have you got to offer you? And like I say, when I signed the deal with Bobby Hamilton to leave Jasper, then Richard Childress called and said, hey, three cars open in the Bush Series. I hear you're leaving the cup deal. How would you like to come over here? And, well, Richard, I'm going to drive for uh, Bobby Hamilton truck deal. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to put Hornaday in it then. And, you know, them was conversations, you know, with Jimmy Johnson and the Petty talking to Richard about coming, is whenever I told them what I was doing, there was no grudges ever held, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And going through that, but going back, it wasn't me and Jasper. It was me and the crew chief that, you know, we got along great. From the time, I remember whenever the owner sat there and told me and the crew chief, Robert's going to be here when we're gone. If you don't like him, you can do something else. And we went up and run fifth at Kansas. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, we still, he was a great crew chief. I loved working with him, but it was a point that he thought he could be better with somebody else. But I knew he was the best crew chief I had ever had at Jasper at that time. He was hardcore. He was a Ricky Pearson type that wanted to win. But, you know, whenever you're a single car, and hindsight's twenty twenty, single cars don't stand a chance racing, you know. You've got to have them other teams to feed off of. And... Controversy was going on is why I left cup racing. I wanted another couple years, but the opportunity with Dodge come open and Bobby Hamilton that, you know what, I can have 25 races a year instead of 36. I can be home every Saturday and Sunday just about. I can go to my kids' ball games. <laughs> I, can, I can be normal after – you know, 20 years of just racing, racing, and racing. You mentioned the truck win at Daytona. Um, what do you remember about that race in particular? My dad was battling cancer at that time. And I remember when I told him I was going to drive a truck, he said, Robert, there's no way one of them trucks uh, handle at them racetracks. And, you know, Bodine had had the bad wreck there at Daytona. And, my dad just did not believe that a pickup truck should be on the racetrack. And he said, I'm telling you, you're going to get in there and you're going to get killed. You're going to get hurt in them trucks. And whenever I won the Daytona race, you know, I said, Dad, this is for you. I can remember that and picking my kids up because I'd went through a year of not knowing what was going to really happen because – I knew it was not going to be a good ending at Jasper if we kept working together, and I didn't want to lose a friendship with the owner. And then go to Daytona and win the race, and just like when I went back with Tad Shifter in the Bush Series, it was, hey, Robert Presley can drive. Robert Presley's just never been in a factory back ride in here, and here he is winning again. And then I got a couple more calls. Hey, would you come over and drive my bush car? I was, I was tired of the seesawing. Nope. I'm going to stay here a couple years, and I'll probably end up retiring. Well, that kind of actually changed, too, because Bobby seen the fun that I was having in Cup. I mean, truck series. He's driving the four car, and the sport's changing. And toward the end of the year, Bobby told me, he said, hey, Robert, I'm coming back to the truck series. But I've got them other two seats. But 
we're going to put you over here in a Jim Harris satellite truck deal. And we're going to sell him whatever he needs and do all that. It didn't work out. <laughs> we went to Daytona that year. Bobby was racing. I'm leading the race, going in third turn. Bobby's drafting me. They're going to give a Dodge Viper away to whoever wins the cup race and the truck race. And Bobby leaves me. And that's a three-wide finish yeah. where Rick Crawford and the 16 truck. It wasn't jealousy because me and Bobby was good friends. My wife and Debbie are great friends till this day. As if you anybody knew Bobby Hamilton, you know, it was not going to be pretty that Robert Presley wins a race in a satellite Dodge truck when Dodge loved me too and wanted to do everything. And me and Bobby kind of had hard feelings from that day. Um, I don't think we ever really spoke that much really? after that because I felt like that was a big turn. And then we didn't get support that we needed from Bobby or Dodge rest of the year. And I remember calling my wife in July that year. We was in Texas. And I said, uh, Gene, I'm getting on an airplane. I'm quitting racing. And she said, what's wrong? I said, I am the slowest truck here. And I said, I'm not going to finish my career like this. And I said, so I'm going dealt, to. You dealt with all that mess in Cup, and now you were dealing with Dealing it, with it in, in trucks. truck series now. Yeah. And uh, I said, I'm coming home. I'm going to get me a flight out. So I come out of my bus there, and Jim was there and said, what's this you quit? And I said, Jim. I cannot continue to race like this. This is not, whenever I am slower, and I've not mentioned anyone's name that was out there that should have been the slowest, and I was. Robert, please, I got new trucks coming, please. Just finish the year out with me. And I said, Jim, we, you ain't give me nothing. This is junk. Well, we run the race and run bad. And then we run a couple more races, and I was sick. I was sick and tired going to the racetrack, running 20th in a truck race. Now, not saying anything bad about the competition, but if you wasn't in the top seven, yeah. you was bad. When you're 20th, you're terrible. We left Homestead. I got out of the thing, truck. I said, guys, thank y'all, Jim. So you did finish out the season. Yeah, I went, okay. and it was only like six races, and just had no interest in it. We had no trucks. He never got nothing. And I said, Jim, thank you. Shook his hand, shook the other one, went back. I was supposed to fly back with some of them. They chartered a plane. I said, I'm getting a commercial ticket back. I flew back home, November 2006. Got a call uh, a couple days after Christmas. Hey, Robert, Jim, how do you want to get to Daytona? Do you want to, us to pick you up flying or? For the next season? For Daytona, yeah. or the next season. Yeah. I said, Jim, I quit. I will not get back in a race car. He said, Robert. Come on, just we're going to test January 3rd, and uh, let's go. I got a new truck. Boy, it's a nice one. I said, Jim, I'm done. We had a conversation there and everything, and I said, uh, Jim, I'm actually going New Year's up in the mountains. We're going up and stay in the cabin some, so I'm not going. I'm going to spend time with family. I quit. I'm not driving. Well, i tell you what, stick that cabin up your ass. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Bleep that. <laughs> January 3rd, get a call, cell phone. Hey, Robert, Jim, listen here. I got a truck in Daytona. 
if you'll come and just test that truck and race for me at Daytona, whatever you want, you can have. I want to win Daytona so bad. You won it two years ago. You should have won it last year. It's time for us to revenge. I got the best of everything. <laughs> There's a moment of silence, and I said, uh, Jim, I can't. I'm in the hospital. What happened? I said, I'm getting splinters out of my ass. <laughs> Never talked to the man again until three months ago. He come to Asheville, and we sat down and talked like nothing had ever happened. <laughs> getting that cabin removed. <laughs> When you did eventually walk away, because I think you ran a, a, a bush season for Tad. No. After that. No, I drove. He hired Marcus Ambrose, and I qualified. I would take the race car when Marcus was running some cup, okay. and right. I qualified Gateway and uh, another race for yeah, him, yeah, Indianapolis yeah. or yeah. the Raceway Park or them was the only two times I got in a race car after that. Did you have – what was your transition away from the seat like? Did did you miss it? Was it a struggle? Or were you satisfied that you had left on your own terms? I was 45 years old, knew I was never going to drive a top-notch race car again. Truck, bush – Cup, nothing. Wanted to build a late model car, and because I still had it in my blood. But then I thought, why am I going to go race for a couple thousand dollars when I'm being paid millions of dollars? That's kind of a disgrace to the people that's paid me to drive for them. So I built my son a race car, and that was my salvation of being at the racetrack and watching him. Next question, your son Coleman raced. <laughs> what kinds of conversations did you have with him about the sport being a long uphill climb? Or were you positive and saying, hey, you can do this, let's go do this? Or was that even an issue? We, we started out in a Bandolero car, and we was at Charlotte running a Bandolero race, and it started raining. And it's probably the only time I ever got into any kind of father-son argument with him is his raining and him and Brandon McReynolds and, you know, the other kids that was racing that went on started just having fun because they raced in the rain of spinning around, going through the grass. And after he pulled in there, I pushed it up in the trailer, shut the door, said, let's go. Well, Dad, can we not hang around here a little while? And I said, nah, if you ain't going to take racing serious, we're not coming to racetrack and you get out here like we're on bumper cars. That's not what racing's about. Whenever you want to be serious, we'll go racing again. And we didn't talk all the way back home. Okay. What would Bob Presley's reaction have been to uh, them playing around the rain and everything? I said it was an absolute waste <laughs> that you're spending money like that right there to go out here and play. Why don't you buy him a dune buggy and let him out in the fields and play? Yeah, yeah. What does it mean to you to see him have the kind of success today from the spotter stand that he's been able to have? The thing is, is just let's characterize this. Bob Presley is one of the greatest short track drivers that ever sat behind the wheel. Of uh, Morgan, Harry, Jack, you know, Sonny Hutch and Ray Hendrick. They was no better short track driver, not because of my dad, but because of the stats of what Bob Presley accomplished on short track. He did not like super speedways. And that's why he never went in the bush or anything else. Robert Presley, I considered myself a decent race car driver, one on short tracks, one on super speedways, one Darlington, one Dover, tough racetracks. One Daytona. Yeah, Daytona. So 
I considered myself a good race car driver, but I surrounded myself with good people when I was successful. Coleman Presley is a driver that had my characteristics, my dad's characteristics, his characteristics, David Pearson's characteristics, Kyle, Coleman Presley, people lost out on that boy right there of not giving him opportunities to drive a race car. Because all the people that's racing day that he raced against, he was a smart, he was aggressive when he needed to be, and he was at the finish all the time. And that's the one thing that we sit back and talk about as a family day, is he says he's up there still driving a race car, but not sitting in the seat. And he loved working with Brad Keselowski. Him and Joe are your best friends, so they have a good relationship. And I don't go to the races. I don't listen to him on the scanner. My wife listens to it all the time. But it's amazing for people that call me, see me out, God, your son is an amazing guy. And now he's doing the Fox deal, you know, commentating. We never knew spotters done what they done. We thought yeah. the driver drove these. Right. There's nobody I'm more proud of than my son of what he has accomplished. I would have loved to seen him in a race car, but it's like me and my wife sit back and say all the time. There's a reason God put him where he's at, because what could have happened? And that's something I never thought about as a racer. I don't think many racers think about it as a racer, but a parent thinks about the safety of their kids. Yeah. Wow. Most of the time when we conclude an interview, we'll ask everybody what they're doing now and how they're spending most of their time. Well, I already know. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about Celebrities Hot Dogs. How did that get started? Well, it goes back to the Bush Grand National days of everywhere we go, Coleman loved hot dogs. And so through the cup deal, truck deal, we'd fly in places early, and, you know, we'd on the plane there, and we'd go find a hot dog place somewhere and done it. So when I was getting ready to retire, I said, I own this building and stuff. Uh, just had some property and my wife and my mother-in-law said they wanted to open a hot uh, or a restaurant I said hey how about a hot dog place and they said oh that'd be fine have a little niche and we'll go in here and sell 100 hot dogs a day and have fun and everything well they made it about four months of selling six to eight hundred thousand hot dogs at times a day and my wife said hey I'm not going to do this. <laughs> well, me being someone that don't quit. So I retire the next year after I open the hot dog place. And I go up there and work some. And I realize, this is fine. I'm meeting all these old race fans. We're talking racing up there. I got pictures all over the walls up there of the history of the Presleys. And... I enjoy it, but then I don't want to be tied down, so my daughter takes over the place. And we've been there 17 years, and it's a hobby to me. It's a job for my daughter, but it's like what I said earlier going to the Jasper Day. Me and Jasper built that race team back up to what it was. Me and Alliance built from an ARCA to a start up. But Robert Presley built the hot dog place by himself. <laughs> wow. All right. So, last question. What in the world <laughs> possessed wow. you to get into politics <laughs> and run for county commission? What were you thinking? <laughs> I was not thinking. <laughs> It was one of them deals. I retired in 06, worked with Tad Geschefter on, you know, with uh, Bobby East, Marcus Ambrose, uh, just going to some races, doing that. 
Then I got Kingsport Speedway because I said, I want to see what it's like on the other side of promoting. And went up there and done that for three years and absolutely learned but loved it and took this racetrack that had been closed for 10 years or so and become one of the premier racetracks on car count, crowds, and making racing back normal again, if you can say what I call normal, of the 70s and 80s. And then the owner of the track decided he wanted to do something different and wouldn't release give me a new lease. So I got out of it and Mike Fryer that built racing engines across from where our hot dog place is, Robert, please come in. He was a county commissioner. <laughs> please come up and help me. I said, I don't know nothing about politics. Well, I need help and you can win because Robert, everybody in Asheville knows you. And I said, well, so I went to a couple meetings and seen what was going on and where Asheville was headed and the cost of it and our education system we got here. Heck, I'll try it. I'll probably lose, but, you know, they ain't nobody going to vote for a race car driver to be a county commissioner. 2016 election, I won by the largest number <laughs> any commissioner had ever won by. <laughs> <laughs> and got in, and it was one of them deals, again, as in racing, hot dog, and everything I've ever done, I don't want to quit until I have accomplished what I think I can. And here it is, 2022. I'm up for election after six years now, three terms, that if it's not in the for say future to win, I can walk away, and I don't know what my next adventure would be, but I've heard people say this quote here. I've lived here all my life. I'd never say that. I've lived here what life I've been here, but not all my life because it's not over yet. <laughs> well, you know, you mentioned Kingsport and running there and, and being the promoter there. I think what you need to do is get involved in another racetrack and hire me as your pace car driver. Boy, I wished I was 10 years younger and you had said that because probably of everything I'd done, made money racing, I loved it. Love the hot dog business, it's been very profitable. I love the county commissioner work and do it. But really, of everything I've done and forget about pay, is running a racetrack was probably one of my favorite things to be able for me to talk to 20 different race car drivers where when you're in cup bush you don't have no friends you might talk but you're not talking <laughs> the truth and to be able to hear what people want and everything and to bring someone like you in you couldn't, you couldn't be a pace car driver. You would what? be so great at helping promote this and giving ideas. Yeah, when you're in racing, you know a side that I don't know. You and other people like that is what makes a team good, that you bring in people from different avenues. Make One man can't make... It's successful. And, Rick, knowing you all through the years and, you know, stories you've wrote and everything, you know so much that you don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is uh, no chance on the pace call. Oh, you, hey, you'd be multi. <laughs> hey, I could have you in multi-role. You could be my announcer. You could be, hey, wireless mic in the pace car there starting the race. Yeah, and, I go. mean – and, hey, you're you sitting in the – I'm visioning it now. Rick Houston in the pace car on a cell phone looking for sponsorship, <laughs> talking <laughs> to the media, telling them what's going on here, and promoting my racetrack all from inside his office. <laughs> there you go. Think about it. Think about it.